What's up, y'all? I'm Mariah Elise, and welcome to Their Glory, a channel dedicated to providing insightful and informative content on the art world. We explore various topics, including tips on career advancement, visual artists, current trends in the art market, conversations with artists and art professionals. And we also explore strategies for collectors to have intention in their collecting journey. If you're watching this channel, you're probably on the same journey that I'm on to find glory within the arts. This is an open letter of shared experiences and knowledge guiding us on the path to finding glory within the arts. Welcome to Dear Glory. Today we're heading into a conversation filled with inspiration and beautiful, multi-dimensional, multi-emotional and tugging art featuring the incredible Zuelethu Mashefa. He's here to take us on a journey into his latest exhibition, Lefa La Ponta Terona, a solo exhibition presented by the esteemed and the very respected Mitochondria Gallery based here in Houston, Texas. So I'm really proud of that. Zuelethu's work translates the profound message of human and ancestral connection through a masterful blend of mediums, that's ink, charcoal, watercolor, phosphorus pigments, silk, and polyester threads. His intricate lines of ink cross and interweave, forming a complex portrayal of his subjects, mirroring the intricate layers of our inner and outer selves. The watercolors coursing through these lines serve as a powerful symbol of the profound connection between our physical presence and our inner spirit. Now, mitochondria, they're a beacon in the art world, specializing in showcasing art from various talented artists from Africa and the African diaspora. Their goal is to educate and expand global public awareness of contemporary African art, providing an enhanced platform for these gifted artists and bridging the gap between them and both experienced and novel art collectors. I'm ready to go super deep into Zueletu's creative process and explore how unique his use of embroidery in printmaking, the captivating stories his work tells, and the transformative role mistakes have played in his creating journey, family detriments and experiences, and criticism on his works. We'll also get a glimpse into the hidden elements of his art, his desires for how he imagines his work to be lived with, how he draws from his heritage, and why he doesn't think it's a great idea to visit his collector's home. We extend a heartfelt thank you to Mitochondria Gallery for this amazing opportunity to speak with Zuelethu. He was genuinely a beautiful spirit. I enjoyed speaking with him and I continue to support and continue supporting the mission to uplift and highlight contemporary African art and African-American art. So prepare for a journey of artistry and inspiration. Grab your favorite cocktail, find a comfortable spot and join us in this enlightening conversation. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for updates on more inspiring content. Let's go ahead and dive into the world of Lefa La Montatrona. Speak about exploring identity, belonging, displacement, lineage, yeah. um, ancestry, and your adaptation of color through your embroidery. Um, it's all very, very beautiful. And <laughs> you know this, right? Like you're creating <laughs> So I just want to start off with, you know, I wanted to introduce you to the audience that we're, we're speaking to now, but I want to give you a chance to just say who you are, talk a little bit about your background. Well, thank you again for, for this uh, opportunity. Um, oh, absolutely. It's such a, yeah, such a great, uh, such an honor to be uh, on this platform. Uh, well, my name is uh, Uzuele Machip and I'm a South African uh, citizen and I, uh, practicing full-time as an artist. And uh, I, uh, I've been at, at the least uh, practicing professionally at least for 11 years now. And uh, it's been such an astonishing, an astonishing um, experience. What's made it astonishing? Uh, just growing in that process, because I had no idea uh, any of this thing was possible. I mean, half the people I've met over the, pro, over the years has just, you know, validated a lot of my insecurities. Mm. You know, so mm. all of that combined has just um, had a certain significant um, impact in my life. There's, I would naturally like to go into asking you where'd your artistic journey begin? But you really said something really interesting right now about your insecurities being validated. And that's something, I work with a lot of artists and that's something that comes up more often than not. 
and you know just dealing with i mean just as humans right as dealing with our insecurities how how have people been able to validate those for you uh well it's not necessarily people but it's it's just um the experiences i guess that are created within the exchange that we have because often i i mean i i i still do at times think that i'm the only one going through my challenges and when i when i get to experience other people uh, in, in different uh, lengths of their careers and uh, that are sharing the same uh, you know that say trauma traumatic experiences mm. and those are relatable and it makes it much easier that um you know just to feel like um, i'm not alone so yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah. we have to start creating a lot more community especially amongst artists because sure what i find is everyone's experiencing the same insecurity mm -hmm. am i good enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is this respectable work <laughs> you know <laughs> but let's dial yeah, true back. true yeah, let's sure. dial back yeah thank you yeah, yeah, sure. rather, yeah, rather, rather. <laughs> so sure. when did you realize when was that, when was that special moment that you realized you were going to be a practicing artist uh to be honest uh I mean, I think it is constantly like reoccurring experiences, you know, because uh, I mean, I've been exposed to, fortunately, I've been exposed to uh, different platforms of, of, of artistry. So um, when I was younger, I used to do theater. So um, that opened up a lot of uh, uh, ideas and uh, allowed me to exercise different um, approaches within the artistry. So. Um, so, so, so that on its own has carried me through. Like I still use some of the um, techniques I learned in theater in my in my in my day to day practice. You know, I still consider myself like I'm rehearsing when I'm at the studio, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna you know like uh, this exhibition is my is my performance. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's, it's all these layers that has just been um, piling up. But I think um, uh, to be specific, um, I. Uh, Jeez, um, I mean, I remember even when I was at school, uh, because I, mean, I had no idea that uh, you could sell your work, you could, you could showcase your work, you could sell it, you know. Mm -hmm. we, uh, I was introduced to, to that, um, to, to, to that, to that um, space when I was practicing my printmaking uh, uh, course. And uh, I mean, they bought my work. I had no idea that you could sell work. And, and someone just came and just saw the work, bought it, and I got paid. And I was just like, what? How, <laughs> how, you know what I mean? So, 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 so it's like small little things like that that kind of, um, you know, make me realize that maybe this is, this is where I, sh I, I never paid attention to it. I never thought like it was uh, like a, a chosen career. Mm. Mm -hmm. When was your first painting sold? My first painting sold, uh, sold, uh, it was probably, uh, um, 2020, 2011. Yes. So I was still a student at the time and, uh, we had the privilege of being, um, uh, given the platform to showcase our work in the, in the space in the gallery because, uh, so the institution has, uh, has like different, uh, facilities. So there's like the gallery, there's like education and also there's like, um, uh, pro shop so pro shop it's the way like you invite professional uh, artists to come and pay their work so um they would encourage young um students just to just to aspire to showcase their work in the gallery mm -hmm. and uh just all of that has helped uh, uh me be able to be exposed to, to at least to some returns and how did that moment feel, feel for you? You're, you're showcasing your work. Is, is this the first time you're putting an, an exhibition together and showing your work? No. Uh, well, uh, it's a, a solo exhibition. This is actually my second exhibition. Uh, mm -hmm. I, my first one was in Italy. I was doing a residency there um, with, uh, with a, um, it's a, it's a mentorship group that, was, uh, that, I, uh, that well, we met in South Africa. They were in Cape Town. There's a city called Cape Town. And uh, they were based there, but they have this like an exchange program with um, South African and uh, Italian artists. So mm -hmm. I was kind of chosen um, as a, as, a, as an exchange student, not a student, but an exchange artist. And yeah. mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to showcase my, my work. 
and uh, that was like uh, my first opportunity. How has your personal experiences significantly impacted the themes in your work? I think uh, just personal experiences that uh, have uh, affected my life. Like, um, I mean, I hate to use this, but this is, I think it's one of the biggest impacts that has helped shape my life. Uh, when, well, I lost my mom when I was quite young. Mm -hmm. And uh, growing up, I was, I suppose, I was like, uh, like uh, you know, I, I had to like basically be the my just my my grand uh, grand child now, mm. and um, you know just mat having to mature early as a kid, and having to you know accept a lot of things as a child had you know uh, I think they helped me uh, sharpen up a little bit more. And fortunately, like I said earlier, that I got exposed to theatre when yeah. I was still young. Um, that helped speed up the process because I could learn how to differentiate and understand myself a bit more better. And um, all of those, like I said earlier, I have brought them into my, into, my, into my practice. So we've talked about theater. Even in our first conversation, you mentioned how much theater has impacted your practice as an artist, as a visual mm -hmm. artist. Can you talk a little bit more about how those worlds combined have kind of propelled you and helped you become who you are? Mm, so, um, well, specifically, I guess, um, with 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 the, with the theatric uh, experience, um, because I was I, I think I was thirteen years old when I when I when I got exposed to it, and um, mainly because I think maybe also it's where it happened. Um, uh, so I mean I come from a Christian background, and um, my gran is like on steroids when it comes to Christianity. So she would force us to like participate in all these. Uh, um, activities in church doesn't doesn't matter what it was as long as you are there. Yeah. So um, <laughs> how many times so, a week? Three times a week, or you get? Ah, jeez, don't remind me. <laughs> um, but um, but it was one of those. I mean, it was yeah, it was it was it was one of those um, 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 circumstances where we were we encouraged to to be in, in those spaces. And um, I remember, um, like I said. Um, when I went into that space, I, I just lost my mom, and I suppose I, I, I wanted to feel, I wanted to belong somewhere, and um, that community was welcoming, and you know I was very vulnerable at, the, at that age, and they, you know, they, 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 so it was like a, uh, it's a bigger community that helped, um, you know, um, comfort my 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 uh, my insecurities at the time, and. Um, I think that has, um, I mean, over the years, because I think uh, I remember I did I did theater for seven years before I to yeah, before I, I, I ventured full time into the arts. Um, yeah, it was such a great mentorship because it uh, it helped me, like I said earlier, just to to mature yeah. a little bit more quicker, and um, I was able to expose myself, like uh, feel naked and be not ashamed of that in front of an audience. And all of those small things had, you know, they, 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 um, I'm trying to find um, the actual feeling of it, but they, they, wow. they it's really interesting. Excuse me? It's really interesting that you say you felt naked in front of an audience. Is, is that a feeling? I mean, it, it was actually you, like as when you're mm -hmm. in theater, it's you, you're up there. Mm -hmm. And sure. in, in this world of being an artist, a visual artist, it's an extension of you. So do you still feel that that feeling of, of being naked in front of everyone when you're putting Of course, it, it comes and goes. It comes and goes because uh, sometimes I have to remember myself and um, uh, at times I have to let go of myself. So yeah. uh, it's something that you have to practice and something that you have to or just to, to learn to tolerate. And, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, it, it just comes and goes. Yeah. So yeah. we're here to really talk about also your exhibition at mitochondria mm -hmm. i don't want to butcher the name of it <laughs> oh yeah sure oh. i mean oh, wait, let me uh, try i try it first are you sure <laughs> yeah. no you don't sure, sure, sure. go ahead okay. go ahead go ahead go ahead lepa mm -hmm. la mm -hmm. Montarona. Am I that's, right? That's 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 so, so good. I'm so, so impressed, actually. It's perfect. Okay. <laughs> really impressed. Yeah. 
So, okay. So can you tell us a little bit about this exhibition and how you got to the, first of all, what does Le Pa La Bon Tatarona mean? Uh, well, uh, well, I suppose the direct translation would, uh, would be um, our inheritance, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like there's certain words in, in, in our language that can't be translated into English. So um, uh, it's like, yeah, it's basically, it's basically about an inheritance, uh, um, all the, all the, uh, uh, the wealth that has been um, given upon us and how we, uh, I suppose, how we get to use it. That's, that's, that's the theme of the work. That's the theme of the work. So yeah. how did you come to this specific exhibition? Uh, well, I was very fortunate also to have uh, Jessica invite me to be part of this exhibition. Yeah. So shout out to you, Jessica. Not out um, to you, always. <laughs> sure, for sure. Yes. Um, uh, for me, it's been an, an ongoing conversation um, uh, uh, internally, um, uh, mainly because of like the spectrum of my background uh, and just the family dynamics. You know, it's like. Uh, it's like a whole pot of like all sorts of things, you know. Um, so I've been I've been on the quest of discovering my my, my background because uh, um, my father, on the one end, uh, is, is 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 of a different clan altogether. Like they are Sutu, they are, they are Kosas and, and Zulus, and that's a different that's a different uh, dynamic. I mean, to what I'm, I grew up under, I, I grew up under. So to speaking, and uh, you know, that, that heritage on its own is is another thing. So, so, so I mean, growing up now that I'm uh, I'm, I'm a father and I I, I I'm maturing up, you know, there's all these questions I'm I'm, I'm trying to fill in because uh, I was raised to, I was raised very well by my by my Christian family, um, but um, yeah, as as I grow up, there are things that I need to uh, discover as I'm discovering myself as uh, as as a uh, as, as a man, so, um, but uh, like I said earlier, these these things are, are these also these questions are not only for me, but for also my um, people around me. My my friends also have to suffer through the same um, same same uh, quest. It's just uh, what is that quest? What is that quest? Um, mainly, I suppose, mainly uh, a sense of belonging. Because uh, also the, the, our, our country has a history of of dispossession of of um, of um, being dis- dispossessed. You know, we've had uh, migration issues from the early sixties, and also so there's just a sense of 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 this dis- dispossession that that that's just lingering on people's minds and and their lives. So um, also, I think uh, as a newer generation um, in a less oppressive uh, system. Uh, you know, we are a bit more exposed to certain things, like a bit of history. Like uh, our children was very fortunate to um, to have found. Uh, I'm gonna show you a quick. Uh, if, if you don't know, it's it's a, it's just a it's a um, basically. It's I don't know if it's showing. It's it's a um, sure. It's basically a book that traces back. Uh, um, uh, well, in this spe- specifically about like the Sotho speakings, like where where were they where they first uh, met and, and and what's their history? So, mm. so there are all these all, all, all these all, all these um, interesting facts that uh, we are now getting to learn about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, when we do learn about self, about ourselves, we become better human beings, and we right. serve our, our communities, our families much better. So, right. so there's, there's there's a huge edge for that. Uh, um, and 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 it's it's exciting. So you're searching for identity. In a sense, in a in, in a sense, in a, in a, in a, in, a, in its broad uh, aspect. Yeah. You know, because it's 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 so broad. I mean, um, I uh, my 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 uh, great grandparents. I know where they're from, and I've I've been to their like what the, we call it the villages. This is like in the in the countryside, mm-hmm. I suppose you'd say. Um, um, and that's that's my first trace of that history. So um, we've been privileged to have that uh, lineage that they, they still practice some of the some, some of those traditions. With this dynamic cocktail of mediums that we spoke about earlier, being ink, charcoal, watercolor, phosphorus pigments, silk, polyester threads, he's woven together this suite of eight pieces that speak to the 
deep-seated bonds of humanity. This signature style of multi-exposure portraits is a tour in a forest across this collection. But these aren't just pictures of people. They're intimate stories of human essence. They're almost abstract in a way. So I let those innovative use of intertwining fine line inks weaving through the overlapping features of the subjects, creating a rich tapestry that symbolize our external and our internal selves, combining the visible and the invisible facets of our identities. Now imagine this, watercolors coursing through these intricate lines that embody the powerful connection between our physical and our spiritual selves. That's what his work is doing. These hues infuse vitality into the art crafting a, a mesmerizing and a transcendent visual journey. Zuelitz's work isn't just about creating art. It's about exploring the depths of human connectivity and our shared journey through life. It backbones us to ponder our own exterior and our interior lives and the complex ties that link our bodies and our souls together. Let's get back to it. more with Zuelitz. Is there, is there a piece that you would consider a piece that's very special and very close to your heart that you'd like to share the sure. story behind? Sure. Um, well, um, some of those pieces, are, are, it's, 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 it's such a, um, it's sad to see your artworks leave the studio because there's a lot of uh, intention within, within the process. Um, but uh, one, of, one of the few artworks uh, that I am, I, I, that this, in the show actually, I think it's, uh, it's called uh, Babi, Babisa. Um, it's actually um, it's, it's a reflection of um, an incident that I just recently learned. Um, it's of like my uh, my close uh, my half sister actually, um, because we haven't been. Uh, I, I mean, I just learned about her. This is literally when I uh, kind of learned about my father, mm. right? And she, so she just popped up in the picture from, from the fact that she, she was, uh, I mean, I didn't know, get to know my dad very well. So by the time I got to, make, to meet him, I, I, got to know, I got to meet my, my sister. And um, those dynamics, I mean, I, I grew up as the only child at home. I mean, the, the, I was the last born at, my, at, at, at home and that was normal. And now that, uh, you know, I'm a bit more matured uh, and I've grown up, I, uh, my sister comes in the picture and to her, I'm an older brother. And so in that space, I'm a leader, I'm a different person. And yeah. whereas in, my, in the other space, I'm, I, I'm still a child, you know? Yeah. And um, just taking those different roles has, has just um, had a lot of um, mental, health issue, mental health on me because I kind of uh, suffered a little bit of depression and anxiety mm. without understanding what's going on because it's just like my whole life was a lie. Whereas um, I just didn't know, well, we're just not exposed to it, I guess, because we're trying to protect whatever that was the case at the time. So, um, so that piece specifically, uh, I remember I had a bit of a uh, downfall, mm. um, a breakdown, no, not a downfall, but a breakdown. Um, but it was, it was a bit constructive because I was very, uh, goes back to my insecurities again, because here I am, grown up and um, I'm, 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 on, I'm on the quest of discovering who I want to be. And, right. and, 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 and now in, in, instead of that experiencing experience becomes easier. It just, it just, it's, it's just a, it's, it's uh, strenuous and it's and very tedious. So uh, I was very fortunate to have had like a very strong support system that helped me like deal with it constructively. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, sure. Well, I mean, mainly that's 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 the yeah. how, how that that piece made me feel. Yeah. Not something I've I've experienced, but many people in my life have. And as I've processed that with them, it always seems like it feels like a bit of whiplash, mm -hmm. and, and having to realize that your existence is true, sure. and the things that you experience they are true, and now this is just an, an, an extension of who you are. But I couldn't imagine, you know, and, and just just to dive into that, I, I couldn't imagine because I, I'm a little sister. I have an older brother. And then if someone were to say, oh, now I'm an older sister, I couldn't imagine how that would make me feel. Sure. So do you process these feelings or did it help you? Do you did you process these feelings as you were creating this piece? 
Uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think that's um, fortunately uh, this is therapeutic, therapeutic uh, being in the studio and expressing all those feelings. Uh, just the embroidery, its own. It's just a, another way of like letting um, or, or rather uh, deflecting your 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 your, your feelings. So um, I think, I mean, I think if it weren't done well, the work would show itself, you know, but right. um, within itself, I think we found, I found a way to handle the situation much, 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 much better than I, w- I wouldn't have if, 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 I, if I didn't learn about myself better. And that, that, makes, that brings me to the multiple emotions that are happening mm-hmm. in one piece. Uh, I mean, they're, they're multi-directional, they're multi-emotional. What does that stem from? And I, I, I'm going to let you answer that question first. Yeah, what does that, what does that stem from? Yeah. Um, to be honest, I, I, I too don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I actually love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but um, um, there's, 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 there's different layers to it, um, and um, I think it's only fair that we all have our own interpretation. Um, like I said there earlier, that um, I mean, I've got this this amazing library of 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 of, of uh, this lineage that, like I said, I had no idea of, you know. And now, uh, now that I'm exposed to it, I, I get to realize that. There's so much uh, dimensions within within my my, my 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 background and my my heritage, you know. So, it's uh, we have we have um, um, this this thing uh, in 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 our culture. It's well, this I don't know how to I don't know what's what's the word for uh, English, but uh, in 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 Sesotho is it's 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 it means uh, it says uh, it translates to. Uh, What's the word? I'm, I'm trying to translate the word. It's like um, it's they say hui, hui kana. So hui kana is like it's, it's too it's too uh, um, uh, like uh, one second. <laughs> Can names right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I got a bit of help from my friend. Um, I was asking him. <laughs> He says that um, uh, it's like clan names. So if you if if mm. if, we, if 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 we speak of our clan names, we we have uh, this this is this is a multi multi dimensional uh, dimension that we get to expose to. So mm. uh, the, the idea behind that is just to to end to to celebrate that uh, that 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 multi dimensional yeah history that we have. Mm. Uh-huh. Are you using the, the images for me? They feel abstract more than they uh-huh. feel like an actual, an actual person. Are sure. you using references from people? Yes. You are. Okay. Yes. 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 Sure. So the process involves uh, obviously first the crime camera, and I have to find. Uh, I, I. 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 I have to identify people that that can relate to like the my, my themes, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. And um, uh, I then, um, once I've taken the photos, I take different, d- different, different angles, um, uh, and then uh, Photoshop is involved. Uh, I would layer the images on Photoshop, and uh, until I get the kind of quality that I like, and then from mm. there, uh, then from there, just transfer it onto 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 paper. Oh wow! So you have so you're going you're using what Photoshop and yes. So so yeah. So so first I have to, yeah. Sure. So it's Photoshop involved. Um, uh, just to layer the images together because uh, I used to do it in, uh, uh, loosely, but it, it's it's just yeah, it, it, it's much it's much more convenient if if, yeah. if, uh, if when I when I uh, learned the. So your background Photoshop. is printmaking. Yes. And where did you learn how to embroider? Uh, well, at home. <laughs> this is something <laughs> that I learned. Um, to be honest, actually, um, the first time I I, I I had to do it, I had to embroider it was. Uh, a client had bought an artwork, um, and um, I remember they had uh, they had they had asked me to uh, respray it with fixative so that it, it holds, mm-hmm. and I had to take it from their from from their office. I went to, took it back to the studio, and um, it was a very windy season. I remember the work mm-hmm. fell off the mm-hmm. off the off the. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Continue. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, 
well, the one artwork, it fell off, it fell off the wall and it, it tore in like almost in half. Um, and when I showed the client, uh, I tried to like redo the artwork and they said, if I can fix it, they'll take it. So um, the only way to fix it was to embroider it. So I had to, I had to stitch it together. And, and this is initially where, where, where it took off. So this came from a mistake. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, most, sure most of the best a things we do in life. Yeah, a beautiful mistake. Yeah. Like most sure. of the best things that we do in life. Is there, sure. you know, it, come from, it comes from a mistake, but I, I do wonder if there is some cultural significance in embroidery. Uh -huh. No, absolutely. Um, uh, so in, uh, in, uh, in Isizulu, uh, they have uh, a, uh, a, um, like some beadworks. And in, in, each, in each and every, in most uh, African, South African specifically, I don't want to assume that what the rest of the uh, clans do, but in most of the South African um, uh, clans, we use uh, uh, beading work as a significantly just to, just to uh, either pass on a message or, mm. or con convey a message or something. Yeah. Mm. So is, is that is that translated to your work? Like, yeah, you sure, for sure. Uh, I think my intention was to uh, try to marry my, my my different backgrounds together. You know, so mm. by using by using the, the 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 embroidery, it's like acknowledging these different uh, backgrounds that I that I have and tying them together, which creates uh, this 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 uh, amazing individual. So yeah. um, so 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 those elements, are, I think, are the kind of metaphors that I'm trying to just to um, bring into the work. Yeah. And is there, I know we already spoke about like the emotional highs and lows like that you've had yeah. while creating this work. Were there sure. any other significant moments that could have either changed the direction of where you were going or pulled back on the direction? Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, my, my most recent one was uh, when we had a deadline and Jessica wanted to work for the show. Yeah. And it was so frustrating because, like, uh, I mean, from my end as a creative, um, work needs to agree with me. And, mm. uh, and, and if, it doesn't, if it doesn't do that, it's so hard to commit to those ideas because I, I know what it takes to curate and put a show together. And I didn't want to disappoint uh, myself more than anyone, you know. Right. So, so I think, I think, I, I, at the recently, I was just like so close to like just like not even having the show because it's just like it's. I just can't. I really cannot let the work go if it's not in a state that I feel like it needs to be in. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. what did you do? Did it, were there specific things that you had to change or? With yeah, sure. There, there were there were there were, there were there were a few more elements that I really wanted to to, to add onto the artworks, and mm -hmm. it felt like it just felt like injustice if I if if I, if, I, if I wouldn't have uh, um, uh, added some of those elements because they 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 uh, amplify the artworks. So um, it was very it was very fortunate. Hey, what are those elements? Um, so I added a bit of uh, embroidery onto the on, onto the eyes. Oh, and, um, oh I'm so yeah. glad you did. It's sure. so special. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I, I mean, usually I would I would use uh, um, a phosphorus pigment. It's like a glow in the dark pigment that I mix with paint and under controlled lighting. Obviously, it would glow. So that was like my main theme at the time. But I decided to change it now because I feel like I'm entering into a different direction. Uh, but I still, I still use that that element. I mean, in some of the artworks. Um, um, I mean, I hope people will discover it over time. But um, yeah. there's, 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 there's that element where, where, where it glows in the dark, and, mm. and, and, and that's 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 uh, something that's also a bit intentional. And that that element isn't in this collection at all. It's not in this body. It is. Oh, it is. It is. Oh. It is. It is. Oh, yes, my yes, God. It is. So it I is, yes, yeah, sure. how do I experience that? Do I need to like ask Jessica to open it, the gallery up at nine o'clock at night? Sure. And just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Um, but um, I mean, fortunately, uh, I mean, it would, be, it would be such an honor to get to meet uh, some of the collectors. I mean, these are the kind of things I'd like to to hear from them if they've experienced it before uh, or not, you know, because uh, I know it's something that doesn't come easy and, and you won't like, to switch off a light and stare at an artwork. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's nothing that's 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 done anyway. But yeah, it's something I wanted to add on, onto the artworks. Yeah. yeah, and it's really special because you really mm -hmm. aren't going to get a chance to experience that unless you live with the work. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. do you want your work to be lived with? Uh, 
how do I want my work to be lived with? Yeah. I think, I think, I think I, I want to be comforting and mm -hmm. create a space where people can can come together and 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 and, and, and uh, experience each other in equally the same way. And I feel like my work needs to, at least for me, to translate in a way that. Um, you know, gives people the opportunity to accept themselves. Mm. Is that what your work does for you? It really does. It fulfills me a little bit. Uh, although, although um, I'm not necessarily um, so um, so um, fulfilled by it because the fact that I'm able to do it, it's just a little bit dissatisfying. But um, it, it it does it does complete um, my 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 sense of be of 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 living. Gives me a purpose. As something I always wonder with. Um, with artists, are you keeping any of the work from any of your collection? Okay. <laughs> I, start, I started. I, I, I literally started doing it. Um, there's, there's, there's a favorite piece actually, uh, and I think it's it was, it was not fair for me not to showcase that work because uh, I've got a very good friend who uh, taught me not to do that. It's like you don't belong. The work does not belong to you, but belongs oh. to to the rest. He said that to me, and it really, it really, it really stuck with me. But this time around, I, I, because of the amount of time that I've put into this this project, I just felt so entitled just to keep one for for my collection for my kids. You know, my I kids will never so get to get, get to see these again. I feel very opposite of your friend. I feel very opposite. He's, he's speaking. He's speaking from an artistic point. You know, he's like, he's like, bruh, people need to see your work. You know, so mm -hmm. there's no need in keeping it here. You know, and I, I, I can, I can, I can completely comprehend uh, those sentiments. They make sense. Like people need to to see work out there, but you know, it's like giving a piece of yourself away, and mm -hmm. you can never, you can never get it back. You know, no, no currency can, can, can. Um, um, bring that back, you know? Right, so do you wish to like, do you wish to travel and visit the homes and, and to see where your work is actually living? Uh, I think that'll be a bit creepy of me because I might even try to, I mean, I've, tried, like to buy some of, <laughs> I've tried to buy some of my artworks for my, for, for my, for some of my clients that I'm, that, that I'm, I'm friends with at the least because they, I mean, would share, I mean, sometimes I'd go to their house or I mean, if it's online um, or phone or whatever platform, you know. Um, and um, yeah, it's just like you're crazy, you know. It's like <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna give you back your You're like trying to take the. You're trying to take it home with you. Sure. I'm just, you know, it's just yeah. Um, it's funny. It just reminds me. Reminds me of my 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 young my hunger, you know. So yeah. So, so that's 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 very um, something I need to work on. I have two more questions for you. One question is a question that I know everyone has. How long does it take you to create one piece? Um, <clears throat> so I uh, actually tried to think about that question very hard. Um, but um, uh, and I think the simplest way for me to, 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 to frame <laughs> this would, um, uh, I mean, because we don't wake sh sh uh, straight hours, you know, like this is ridiculous uh, and, uh, Unmeasured hours, um, but if I was working in uh, like a nine to five job, if yeah. I had to come into the studio at nine o'clock and then leave it at five o'clock, I'd probably say maybe three weeks just to get one artwork um, at at a stage where it's it's at at least um, um, let's say say ninety percent done because I, I don't I don't think any any artwork is ever complete, but mm. um, um, you don't think any of your artwork is ever complete. I mean, I always think I can do to do, do, do something better. I can always add yeah, something yeah. to it, especially <laughs> once it's out there. I'm just like, ah, dude, you could have done this here. Yeah, just yeah. Put, oh. put the shade like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's always some improvements to add into work, which is one of the things that really fascinates me with the creative process because I'm yeah. constantly trying to improve the same thing, the same ideas, and mm -hmm. that's 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 maybe that's a little bit liberating. That actually directly leads me to my next question: of how yeah. are you receiving? <clears throat> criticism um i've been very fortunate to uh to have been criticized at a very early age where i've numbed up to it i mean it doesn't really matter it's just someone else's opinion uh and and um the fact that you know 
someone's gonna come in, possibly buy my work. It's enough. I don't need. I don't need. I don't. I don't need to impress a lot of people. I, I mean, I'm still trying to impress myself with yes. my ideas and my process. So, uh, criticism is constructive. I, I I think if if it helps my work, I'll take it. You know, if 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 it's just something that's just destructive, obviously just, uh, just just cut it away. But usually, I, I tolerate a lot of a, a lot of uh, um, criticism because um, it just I learned something from it. So with all of this combined, with the criticism and you being able to receive it well, with dealing with insecurities and dealing with life experiences and pouring all of this into your work. Yeah. What advice would you give an artist that dealing with those same things because we know who they are? Damn. <laughs> I mean, um, you just have to know what you want for yourself and you need to give yourself that opportunity to at least exercise your own ideas and um, yeah, just stick to what you know, you know, and that will help you a lot. I, 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 I mean, uh, personally, I, when I think about um, how many times I've been rejected, like, I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that I was so re I was rejected so many times where it taught me to create my sense of style. I've got my own technique now. These are things that I'm doing for myself and I'm in control of that. And that's such a, it's, it's complete freedom, or at least for me. So, yeah. So just you. take your time. Yeah, just take your time. Do what you have to do. And um, like, like if criticism is not constructive, then just don't take it. Don't use it. You know. Mm. Yeah. Mm, I love that. If criticism is not constructive, then don't take it. That's really amazing advice. <laughs> well, thank you for, for hearing me out. Oh, absolutely. It's a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. And I'm sure. so grateful. Uh, this 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 platform itself has allowed me to speak to artists like you. And mm -hmm. also, it's a blessing to be able to be here and you're there. Sure. We're sure. able to share thoughts and share ideas. And I hope that you and I continue to do that. Me too. And thank you so much for sharing with this audience. And I know that Jessica is going to be really happy with this because you really so, poured so into right. us. You really, yes. gave, you know, yeah. you gave us honesty. Yeah. You gave us truth. And sure. that's all we could appreciate. Thank you. Thank you also for creating this platform. Um, it, it really means a lot. Absolutely. Are and you? thank you to the internet as well for not giving us any issues. Oh my God, right? Like, right. so for everyone who does yeah. not know, this is our second time trying this. And at the beginning yeah. of the call, I, don't, I think mm. we both were kind of like, oh no. We're I don't just anymore. like, it's not again. Okay. <laughs> not again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, thank, so thank you to, to the Wi Fi. Um, yes. <laughs> the Wi Fi gods. <laughs> the Wi Fi yeah. gods for helping us yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, it, it has been amazing speaking with you. Please let me know if you ever need Thank anything. You. you are always invited to Houston. Please, if, if anything that we could do to get you here, please let us know. I'm going to hold you against it. Oh, please do. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for, for this opportunity. That was, that was such a, an amazing conversation and such a blessing and an honor to get to speak with Zoella Thu. This is what it's about for me, connectivity, community with people who have things to share and having that opportunity to allow a platform where they can share their ideas and their thoughts with you. And I just thoroughly enjoy speaking with Zuela through. He was such a genuine and such and is such a genuine and beautiful spirit and human being that is genuinely just exploring who he is and doing that through lineage and heritage and trying to understand human connectivity and what that really means. I want to give a sincere thank you to Mitochondria Gallery to allowing the opportunity to connect with Zuela through, through his exhibition at Mitochondria Gallery and thank all of you for listening and to being a part of this community. Let us know in the comments who else you want us to speak with and commune with and love and have them share their thoughts with you in the meantime i hope you guys have a great week stay safe in these streets like i always tell you make sure to subscribe and vibe with me <laughs> or if you vibe with me subscribe with me and yeah
I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.